My name's Kobe. Uh, my wife Krista and I and our three-year-old Theodore live in Stillicum. Uh, small town, about 6,000 people, and there's primarily the population is military families and retired people. Uh, getting to be some more young families there now, but uh, it's kind of an interesting context being um, not a ton of huge needs that are just right out there in the open, uh, you can see, but uh, learning to focus as a mission community on where do we see brokenness in this area, and as the people of God, what are we going to do about it? How can we be the salt and light here? Um, another huge portion of uh, context is I own a small business with a friend of mine. It's a painting company in the construction trades, so um, yeah, it's not not the most glamorous industry to be in, and uh, I really wasn't all that excited about being in it for a long time, and it's really been over the last couple years that I've started to see how important the role and responsibility we have in the community and in the area and with our employees and our customers um, being a small business owner. Um, so that's a huge, huge part of the context for um, the mission God has sent us on in the area. One of the biggest things I've learned about being a small business owner in the last year or two has been uh, God cares just as much about the working world, that full third of our life, as he does about what happens in a missional community meeting or our events on mission or Sunday church gathering. And I really did not see my business like that when I first started. It was really basically just a means to make money until I could get into some kind of ministry job or something. Because if you're really committed, that's what you do, ministry, right? And it was uh, a couple years ago, I feel like God really just made it clear he cares a lot about that. And I mean, my employees' lives are affected by the way I run my business and the decisions I make. And customers are giving us money and entrusting us to meet an expectation we've created and sold to them. And those things really matter, all those interactions with people. And um, yeah, so, that kind of connects to a big thing learned about leading a missional community in the last year or two is that sometimes I've felt this tension or conflict or guilt between um, all of the time it takes to run this small business and then trying to lead this missional community too. Um, I think Small business owners leading a missional community should not feel guilty about being diligent and putting in the time it takes to run their business well. <clears throat> if you don't run your business well, like Jesus would run it, or like you're actually a manager for Jesus who owns the business, because he really does, you're not being a good example to the people you're trying to lead on mission of what it means to be a disciple in your everyday life. So don't pit these against each other. It's really tough sometimes to keep those together that running my business well as a disciple of Jesus and leading the missional community are not at odds with one another. Um, really, they if you're not leading your business well, if you're not doing a good job taking care of your employees and fulfilling the promises you're making to customers and um, just running things like you would be giving an account to Jesus, who's the owner of it, you're not setting a good example for the people you're leading in what it means to live on mission in their everyday life, which is a f half of their waking life. If you build a business around yourself, you're gonna die. <laughs> Unless you're just building a job. And, and that's, you know, a professional services kind of job. That's awesome. Do it well, you know, get some help with your bookkeeping or whatever. But uh, that belief that I can do everything and that I am generally able to do everything better has really hurt our business from being able to grow in both profitability and, and expansion, but also in health. Um, my business partner, when I haven't 
trusted enough to just delegate things or, or say, hey, I can't do this. I'm going to need you to take this over. Um, it's really hurt our business and hurt uh, the environment we create for the employees. Uh, when, I, when I feel like I've got to be on the job all the time and I got to be doing this all the time and I got to be doing this all the time, then you know, our project management suffers and then we don't end up getting jobs scheduled. Communication happens bad with our employees and they don't know where they're supposed to be and just creates a bad work environment for them. Um, so one of the ways it fleshed that struggle with pride and, and such has fleshed itself out in the missional community context is just not, not having an intentionality about creating opportunities for others to step up and flourish and use their gifts and sort of hogging, hogging the responsibility that God wants to distribute to the community. Um, oh, I can do that. I don't need to bring that up to the ministry community. I can send the emails out. I can do this stuff. I can plan this. I'll coordinate that. Um, it really prevents people from growing and prevents them from flourishing and, and stepping into who God has gifted and called them to be. I think what excites me the most about uh, the business context right now is just that discovery over the last couple of years, how much God cares about business and uh, that the it's not this side thing that you just have to do to make money to get by so you can get onto the stuff that really matters that this business side of things really matters to God. He cares about the way we do our hiring and the way we create our schedules and the way we manage our employees and how we treat our customers and the what we do with the money that comes in. He cares about all that stuff and he cares about the systems we create and the structures we build and the impact that has on countless people's lives. I mean, business is connected to everything. All of us are constantly interacting with businesses and uh, coming to see and understand that God really cares about that and that this matters, that this is a place God is sending his people into has been really exciting and encouraging for me. Um, I think one of the most exciting things I've been experiencing in the missional community context is as I've been learning to let go of some of that control and trying to do everything on my own, seeing other people, uh, seeing things happening uh, on the mission and people taking initiative and responsibility, things that I didn't start. Uh, it used to be, I'd, you know, you could point back to everything happening in our missional community that was happening poorly, and I would be at the start of it because I had to start everything. And seeing other people come up with their own ideas and We'll have a conversation about where do we see brokenness in the town of Stillicum, this little town. And as we start identifying some places we see brokenness, other people start saying, and here's something that I think we could do about it. And it's been really fulfilling and exciting to see that. If I could give one piece of advice to anybody who is a small business owner and a missional community leader or wants to lead a missional community, it would be this. Do not do it on your own. Uh, if you don't have a team of people in this missional community context, if you don't have a team of people that believe the vision and that understand what you're about and are personally committed to it, I don't mean you've committed them to it. I mean, they've committed themselves to it. Um, you're going to burn yourself out and you're going to get frustrated probably and you're not going to end up running your business well or your, or leading your missional community well, or one of them you might lead okay. But if you don't have a team of people that start this thing, um, if there was one thing I could go back and do differently, I would not have started a missional community with just me and my wife as the leaders of it. Um, it's got to be a team from the beginning. Um, it's just, it's going to be the healthiest leadership team, and it's going to naturally lead to the most potential for multiplication and fruitfulness because people are going to see, oh, it's not just if I want to lead a missional community, I have to be that guy that can run everything. It's, I, w I could be part of a missional community 
leadership team in, in my neighborhood and multiplication is going to be a lot more likely. So get a team, <laughs> find people. You, you can't make people commit, but find people that want to. If you can't find them, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. And in the business context, um, biggest piece of advice, um, you're going to need believers if you're not if you don't have a business partner that's a believer or believers in your business or something like that you need other believers speaking into your business life uh that's how discipleship works right we're speaking the gospel to one another learning how it applies in each other's lives and it's really easy as a business owner to have this whole separate life and then there's your church life or something but you've got to bring those together and allow others Tell them what's going on. Tell them the struggles you're facing. Tell them what's frustrating you the most and allow them to, to come at it from their perspective. Um, I think you've got to, even if you don't have a leadership team in your company, think of the, your missional community as a team of believers that is helping each of you learn how to live out the gospel in your specific context and you're one of those people. You need that community to help you learn, how can I be a better steward, a, a better, more faithful disciple of Jesus, live out my identity and in the power that the Spirit's given me in this context. Just like you're trying to teach everybody else to do, you need it too.